Hey there, this video is part of a full online course right here on YouTube called Tofu Mastery. So I highly, highly recommend starting from the very first lesson, which you can find here. Otherwise, let's get to it. Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're going to teach you how to make fishy tofu and chips. We've already made the chips in the previous video, so in this one, we're gonna tackle that tofu. Fish and chips was one of my childhood favorites, and I am so happy that there is a way to make a vegan version that has all of that fishy taste. I have two small blocks of tofu here, anywhere between 500 grams and 600 grams in total, so I'm going to do four steaks in total, cutting each one of these blocks in half. And again, you wanna find the firmest kind of tofu you can find. And if you find one that already has all of that liquid kind of taken out, that's great. If not, pressing your tofu might be a good one in this case. So now we're simply going to cut some slits, just like we did in our other fishy tofu recipe. So I like to go on a diagonal and remember, don't cut all the way through. You want this to hold its shape. Now traditional fish and chips, of course, has that tapered shape in the fish. You can just leave it like this. It's really just a matter of the look of the dish, or you could just taper it slightly and cut some of those ends off. Don't throw these out. These are great for making a tofu scramble the next day. Look at those slits. That's where all the seasoning is going to go. Our main seasoning for this fishy tofu is going to be nori seaweed. This is where fish get their fishy taste. That's where we're gonna get it too. So this is uh, just one and a half sheets of nori. These are the kinds you use to make sushi. You can find them in any supermarket these days. And what we're going to do is we're gonna cut some pieces into the exact shape of our, well, not exact, roughly the same shape of our uh, tofu pieces because we're gonna place that on the bottom of our tofu and the rest we're gonna cut into slits. A lot of people uh, use nori flakes or they pulse these in a food processor or in a blender. I say, why dirty up your blender when they are scissors? All those pieces that you have left over, just put them together in a little bundle and cut these into thin strips. We're gonna start seasoning on the side that has the slits. We of course need lemon. Lemon is such a big part of that fishy flavor. And when you're adding it, we just need a little squeeze. Open it up a little bit with your fingers so that it gets slightly inside the tofu. You don't have to be obsessive about it. We're also going to season with some salt freshly ground pepper, and a little bit of garlic powder, which really adds to the flavor of this dish. Don't worry, now we're gonna get these seasonings in there, and we're just gonna rub, and rub a little bit on the inside too. Now we're going to add some of those thin strips of nori, and again, open up some of those slits, and pop those babies in there. Grab a plate or a Pyrex dish, wherever we're going to let these rest and get flavorful. We're gonna place them um, slit side down. So upside down, so we can now add our nori tops there. We're gonna add an additional squeeze of lemon juice on top. This is gonna be a little bit of moisture to help that nori stick. And just press down. A little more lemon juice to top. And now we just let these sit and get flavorful and you can just do the rest of the recipe while you let these sit for a bit. So uh, wait for your chips to be done or prepare your batter, which is what we're gonna do next. So we're going to use some all-purpose flour. I'm just gonna add it to a bowl. Some cornstarch. This is the secret to this particular batter. It just adds the most airy, wonderful texture. We need some salt, of course. I'm gonna be adding some baking powder. It's going to kind of fluff up our batter when it hits the oil. So good. And just for a hint of color, 
we're gonna add some turmeric powder. Let's whisk everything together, make sure everything is combined. And now we're gonna add our liquid. For this batter, I love to use really, really chilled beer. So it's very important that it's cold uh, because it will help to create that texture in the batter once it's fried up. Now, if you do not wanna use alcohol, you can just use some cold seltzer, for example. The bubbles really also help for the texture. You can of course also use non-alcoholic beer if you want some of that taste in there, which is really, really good. And what I recommend is adding the beer in slowly, and that way your batter is gonna tell you how much it needs. Flour is kind of temperamental. Sometimes it absorbs more or less depending on the brand you use. So I have mine mixed up here. It's a little bit runnier than a pancake batter, but it, I want to get it to that pancake batter consistency. So I'm gonna let it sit now for five minutes I'm heating my oil on high. I'll show you that in a second. But one of the secrets to getting really crispy things after you've fried them is not to let them rest on parchment paper, but to let them rest on a rack. If you place them on parchment paper or on a plate, what you're gonna do is create steam and it's gonna make that crispiness that you created and you worked so hard for soggy. That's not what we want. So just a baking pan or anything, a plate, and just place a rack on top. Now here, since we're gonna be working with hot oil, I want you to be extremely careful. Make sure there aren't any kids or pets running around. Now what kind of oil to use? Any that is neutral tasting. So it can be safflower, sunflower, vegetable oil, canola, anything like that. And we definitely want enough so that the pieces can rise to the surface and they're not in contact with that pan. If you're using a fryer, you can set it at 350 degrees Fahrenheit, but you don't need a thermometer. What you're going to use to kind of gauge if it's at the right temperature is you're gonna drop a little bit of the batter inside and it should immediately rise to the top like you've seen here. A very helpful tool to help you along in the process is a spider because any droplets of batter that you see, you wanna take out so that the oil doesn't have any of that burnt flavor that can happen when we leave too much of that in there. So my batter is right here. I've got my rack. You want to have everything nearby and you're going to very carefully grab one of your pieces of tofu. You want to make sure that the nori stays on top of that tofu. So hold it a little bit while you do this dunking and then very carefully and you can use a pair of tongs to do this as well. Very carefully. Add that in. As soon as it get, gets golden on the top, we're gonna flip using some tongs. Now one yummy thing that you can do if you really want lots of that crispy batter is spoon a little bit right on top and the oil is gonna kind of glue it to the piece you've added, but you're gonna get some extra crispiness. As you can see, these are golden. They're really crispy. Just wanna show you. Can you hear that? Oh my goodness, so good. These are the two in which we simply added the tofu in. And these are the two where I spooned some of that batter all around. If by any chance you made a lot and you have leftovers, the batter will soften in the refrigerator. So what do you do to reheat that and bring it up back to crispness? You just, just as it is here on a rack, pop it in a 425 degree oven until it has recrisped, usually Five minutes will do. Always a squeeze of lemon. And let's dig in. Mmm. That is so fishy. It's weird. So good. So there you go. Delicious, crispy, fried fishy tofu and chips right at home. Uh, the more you practice, the easier it becomes. Don't forget to show us your pictures using the hashtag Ramble and tagging us on Instagram. Follow us there for more tips and behind the scenes. See you in the next video. Thanks for watching. You didn't think I was gonna leave you without dessert, did you? In our next video, we're using our tofu to make a delicious lemon and poppy seed tart. And then 
comes chocolate.